Lords and ladies, please give a royal welcome to our maestro of musical madness, Sir Samuel of Morocco. <laughs> And now, lords and ladies, good gentles all, please welcome those loquacious lovers of legends and law. Those versatile viscounts of voluminous verbosity as they portray a panoply of personalities under this preeminent proscenium. Please welcome Mr. Smythe and Mr. Jones. I'm Mr. Jones, and how's each and everybody doing today? Welcome to the theater, the famous Royal Theater, and while we're in the theater, I say let's do a play. Using our imagination, as well as good enunciation, together we will be creating a creation that will take your breath away. <laughs> For all the world is a stage, my friend. Attend and hark, if you can hear to land, we're gonna tell a tale with once upon a time at the start, and there's a happily ever after and again. I say, Mr. Smythe. Yes, Mr. Jones. What story shall we players play today? Uh, today we shall render upon these boards an adventure that is most amazing. Oh, well said, Mr. Smythe, for today we tell the timeless tale of Tango! It's a very special tale of a very special girl. She's full of hopes and dreams, a little something like you. And if she puts some work into it, it makes her mind up to pursue it. She can make her wish come true. It may be awfully hard to do, but with imagination, with courage and determination, if she can conquer all her fears and trepidation, well, then she just might make it through. For all the world is a stage, my friend. Attend and hark if you an ear to lend. And here's one thing on which you can depend. We're gonna make a little magic if you won't be the part. We will create a little chronic full of courage and heart. We're gonna tell a tale once upon a time at the start. And there's a happy ever after at the end. Happily ever after at the end. Welcome to the Royal Theater. To help us tell our story today, we have two special guests. Oh, two special guests? Yes. Who's on first? A young lady with gold and a lock. Oh, Goldilocks and her three dancing bears. No, we do not have three dancing bears. Only two. No. Just one. No, there are no dancing bears. Lords and ladies presenting Goldilocks and no dancing bears. <laughs> Please, you're being ridiculous. Dancing bears. Mama, Papa, look, there's a little baby in the background. No, there are no dancing bears and no Goldilocks. But you said a young lady with golden locks. Yes, Rapunzel. Rapunzel doesn't have any dancing bears. No, she's our first guest. Our first guest. Yes. Who's on second? That is the question. Well, I can hardly wait. Lords and ladies, it's time to give a warm welcome to our first royal guest. The one, the only, the one and only, Rapunzel! <laughs> Princess Rapunzel, we are honored to be in your presence today. And we are most delighted you've accepted our invitation to join us in a live performance of your story. Oh, it's my pleasure. After all, who better to help tell the story of Rapunzel than Rapunzel? This is going to be such an adventure. Now remember, we are here to assist you in any way we can. Should you wish to know where to stand, we shall show you. Should you want to know what to say, we will tell you. Should you wish to recognize one of us for most outstanding performance by a player in a leading role, drama or comedy, we shall kneel before you in humble gratitude. I'm sure you'll both be wonderful. Very well then. Are you ready? Yes. And let the play begin. Once upon a time, there was a radiant young lady named Rapunzel who lived at the top of a tall, tall tower. From the time I was just a baby, my mother never allowed me to go outside. Each day as Rapunzel gazed on her tower window, she wondered when would her life begin. My dream was to see the floating lanterns that appeared in the night sky every year on my birthday. Yeah, but today, like every other day, Rapunzel's daydreams were interrupted by the sound of a familiar voice. Rapunzel! Let down your hair! Oh, ah, let me undo that for you. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute! 
You have no idea how long it takes to breathe this. Ah, but of course. Stunt here, please. Woo! What's that? That is a theatrical representation of your hair. Oh, I love the theater. Rapunzel, I'm waiting. Coming, mother. Immediately, Rapunzel lowered her hair so that Mother Gothel could easily ascend the seat tower wall. Oh, dearie. Oh, thank you. It should be noted by all in attendance that Mother Gothel is not Rapunzel's real mother. That's right. I was kidnapped by Mother Gothel when I was just a baby. And why was Rapunzel kidnapped? Oh, Mr. Jones! Because of her magic hair! Yes, which keeps Mother Gothel. The fairest of them all! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rapunzel, oh! Ah, Princess. Rapunzel, Mummy's feeling a bit run down. Why don't you let me brush your hair while Mr. Smythe sings your magic song? Whenever I sing the magic song, my hair begin to shimmer and glow. And when it glowed, it cut Mother Gothel young with its special healing power. As Gothel brushed the enchanted hair, the years melt in a way. Like sands through the hourglass, thus were the days of our lives. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Oh, ah, princess. Thank you, my dear. Now, get me my mirror. Oh, oh. Oh, do you know what I see? I see a strong, confident, beautiful young lady. Oh, look. You're here, too. <laughs> Realizing this might be her last opportunity, Rapunzel summoned up the courage to ask. Mother, I was wondering, since it's my birthday tomorrow, would you please take me to see the floating lanterns? It's my only birthday wish. <laughs> Absolutely not, Rapunzel. Oh, uh, sorry. <clears throat> Flower, gleam, and glow. Let your power shine. Make the clock reverse. The back of the bottle's mine. Oh, no. I told you, my dear, the world is a dangerous place filled with ruffians and pods, and that's why I keep you locked up in this beautiful town. Oh, oh sorry. Seriously, Sam. Flower glow, power shine, clock reverse, by my mind. <laughs> For your own safety, my dear, you will never, ever, 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 ever leave this tower, ever. Oh. Trust me, Rapunzel. Mother knows best. Oh. Rapunzel was determined to see the floating lantern. So she did what any imprisoned 18 year old girl would do. She packed up a frying pan and headed for the window. Looking down, Rapunzel spotted a young man climbing her tower. A stranger! And the young man hauled himself over to the tower room. Lords and ladies, a hearty has off for Flynn Rider! Rapunzel any imprisoned 18 year old girl who just knocked out a climbing stranger would do. Was stolen. Flynn was a wanted man. Look, Blondie, there is no way that I will ever, 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 ever take you to see the floor. Oh, okay, I'll take you to see the lanterns. Anything to get that crown back. And so Rapunzel let down her hair. And down the tower they climbed. Okay, well, this isn't weird, just climbing down hair. As they scaled down the stone wall, the stranger introduced himself as Flynn. Flynn Rider. Time <laughs> <laughs> before Rapunzel could say, Holy hairbrush, Flynn! If we were on the ground and they were off and running on their new adventure. I can't believe I did this! This is so fun! I just hope we don't run into any ruffians or thugs. Hope we to end this adventure as quickly as possible. And avoid being arrested by the royal guards, Flynn said, Hey, are you hungry? Because I know a great place for lunch. And thus he led the way to the Snuggly Duckling Tavern! Which, as it turns out, was filled with ruffians and thugs. Hello! Oh, would you look at this bunch? Now this is a mean looking bunch of ruffians and ducks. Now, look at that guy. Now never trust a man with a mustache, especially a milk mustache. Don't let these princesses in disguise fool you, Bonnie. Pretty sure I saw them on oh, the kingdom's most wanted list. You know, I think it'd be so much safer if we turn you around and got you back home. What do you say, buddy? Get back to your tower and we'll get that ground. Excuse me. 
Are you Flynn Rider? Do I look like Flynn Rider? Well, what do you think? Does he look like Flynn Rider? <laughs> Lanterns in honor of their lost daughter. They're so 
beautiful. I think I feel the lantern's warm glow. I realized. I was falling in love. And at last I see the light. I fly the fog has lifted. And at last I see the light. And it's like the sky is Yeah. 